What's going on, BOFers? Peter Verrier here at New York Comic Con with producer James Tucker for Reign of the Superman. James, um, the death of Superman has been told numerous times. Oh, yes. What was it like to finally bring the Reign of the Superman to the small screen? Um, it was a lot of, it was challenging, I would say that. Um, again, death of Superman is a little easier because you have one job and that's to kill Superman. <laughs> Um, with this one, you know, there's there's a lot of heavy lifting. You have to introduce four new characters, who matter, intri you know, they're they're really important to the story, and then you have to carry forth the idea that the rest of Metropolis is still mourning Superman and what. So it's a big cast involved in this um, like of characters, um, and then other just to give them each their own moment to shine in a, a 74 minute or five minute movie is. It's challenging, but I think we really managed, you know, from what I've heard from people who've seen it, they, they really enjoy it. They really think we did a, a solid job of, of, of covering all our bases with these characters. So, Of the four new Supermen, which one shines the brightest in your eyes? Uh, you know, again, we were trying to give everyone their due, but I think just for, um, just because of all the characters, this one probably has had more exposure as Cyborg Superman, and he was probably the most challenging to nail just so, and I think, I mean, people know kind of know who Steel is, because we we introduced him in earlier movies, so, um, but mainly, I, yeah, I'd say Cyborg Superman is probably the, to me, the revelation, because he's someone I've never dealt with. I've done Superboy-related things, um, I've done Steel-related things, but I, I never did a Cyborg Superman, so, and he's a fan favorite, and people, you know really gravitate to him so I think he's probably the strongest character. What was it like bringing the Eradicator uh, to life? I feel like this is the first time Eradicator's really been brought up in animation. Uh, he was a lot of fun because in our movie he's kind of um, he's not it's not like he's 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 um, a humorous element in that he's so dark as far as you know he's willing to just do what he has to do to, to stop crime so he's kind of a dirty hairy type mm -hmm. or terminator type so um we had a lot of fun playing him against the other superman because he's very straight kryptonite krypton uh, he's very much by the book and he's kind of the thing i like about all these supermen is they represent different elements of who superman is you know superboy has his youth and idealism and naivete and um you know eradicator is kind of like he represents the Krypton half of Superman, the kind of cold, um, science-based kind of no-nonsense part of Superman that Superman doesn't let really get out of hand. He's he kind of suppresses that because he doesn't want to be cruel, whereas Eradicator has no problem with cruelty. Or, and um, and Steel, I don't. I think Steel is just the heart of what Superman is. He has the same sense of duty, the same sense of purity, the same sense of not necessarily religion, but he's, there's a spiritual base to both characters that I think there's that's what their commonali commonality is. Cyborg Superman's a mystery, which is why he's probably the one that in this story people are most wondering about as far as is he or isn't he. Because he, he looks most like Superman except for the metal half. Right, right. And in our movie he sounds like Superman, but we don't know. We don't know yet, so that's the mystery. Well, I was a big fan of the last movie, and I'm really looking forward to this one, sir. Thank you very much. What's going on, BOFers? Peter Vera here, still at New York Comic Con, the Reign of Superman panel with Philip Barassa. Phil, um, what was it like to just kind of create a, a new look for these characters? These characters are pretty 90s, especially yeah, Superboy. Sure. What was it like redesigning them? Um, we tried to keep the elements that we felt like were essential, you know, and lean into things, even even if they're a little hokey or corny, if they serve the narrative, you know. So like Superboy, for instance, the leather jacket and the shades, they serve the narrative role that he plays in the film. They this over-the-top flamboyance and this branding almost, you know what I mean? So. 
you'll understand when you see the movie, but it, it totally still worked, so we kept it. But when you look at his costume, the eagle-eyed or, or the hardcore fan will notice updates, and that's just where I felt like it needed an update, and by changing it, I wasn't changing anything fundamentally important. How close did you want to stay to the character originally, the source material? How much did you ch actually change? I would say that we, like I said, we, we kept all the important themes and we kept like the basic feel of it. Uh, if we had, if it was a different, completely different kind of project and you have a specific animation studio that you think can do like over the top, absurd, kind of cheese-tastic stuff, which is what that 90s stuff was, then I would have leaned into it 100%. But we're an assembly line making, we're an animation factory. And I think that certain things will not play based on the, the way that we produce our animation. So I try to update things and streamline them for the animators I'm working with. Give them stuff that is simple to understand and appealing to draw and an appealing visual. Um, if we had a crazy high budget and access to certain studios, you might lean into the, the the complete 90s aesthetic because you could pull it off with this high degree of fidelity and the contrast would be interesting. It's kind of a more nuanced conversation, but there would be ways to do that. Was there a particular character that you enjoyed the most working on? I think I had the most fun with Cyborg Superman. Yeah, he he has a he had, he's like got this horrific aspect, but he also has to emote like in a very human way and trying to find the right balance of elements and details to bring out those sort of complimentary or, or flip sides of him was an interesting challenge. Thank you for your time. Right on, my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. What's going on, BOFers? Peter Vera still at the Reign of the Superman panel here with yeah. Niambi Niambi, voice of Martian Manhunter. That's right. Niambi. Now, really quickly, right off the bat, Hydrox Oreos, what's your take? Hydrox Oreos? What's my take? I don't even have one. I don't have a take. You got, Mercer Manhunters is a huge I know, cookie fan. I but. know, but I mean, like, I, for me, I haven't had a cookie in a long time. <laughs> I can tell. Look at this yeah, amazing I physique. Had a cookie. <laughs> I haven't had an Oreo in a long time. Um, they're delicious. They are. Yeah, I had to go with John Jones there. They're delicious. <laughs> What's yeah. it like playing the voice of reason, the calming force of the Justice League? I think it's 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 actually really cool. It's 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 um, uh, you know it's sort of refreshing you know to to play this character that um, that sort of sees things from a place that's similar to me actually mm -hmm. uh, that who sees who sees things from a, a, pers a perspective of of seeing the good in humanity, seeing like what's best uh, for uh, you know bringing you know bringing out the best in all of us, you know, and, and especially with what happens to him and, and his family back, back home in Mars. The fact that um, he's seen it happen when it, with, between uh, the Green Martians and the White Martians, you know. So, um, so yeah, so I feel, I feel like uh, honored, you know, to play that. Yeah. Do you feel you could take on uh, any of the five Supermen I probably, we'll probably see in the film in a fight? Uh, well, I know, I know for a fact that I'm like, uh, I'm a part of the fight. I don't, but I know that I can take on any of them if they let me. <laughs> I mean, my, I mean, I got so many powers that like. If you could pick one of the Martian Manhunter's skill set, what would you pick? Um, I would pick his ability to read minds. But although that would be crazy, that would be crazy because then I, you know, then you're saying stuff and then I'm like, ah, that's gross. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Ah, uh, you know, um, the ability to read minds. I think. What's going on, BOFers? Peter Berry here at New York Comic Con 2018 with Patrick Fabian. The new Wh Batman. What? Oh, no. Ooh, oh, oh, Batfleck? What? No. No, no. no. Unless Batman's going to look like a corporate lawyer, so, you know. <laughs> you are playing? I played Cyborg Superman in the reign of the Superman. What's it like playing literally the angriest man in all of DC Comics? That's interesting you think he's angry. I think he's just put upon and he's just trying to work some things out. That's all. Of the, uh, the other three new Supermen, who is the strongest? Who's, like, who do you go toe to toe with? What's uh, what's the action like in the movie? Well, you know what? Um, I know uh, in the source material, I get to uh, what's the phrase? Oh, that's right, kick Superboy's ass. I believe is what happens. Nice. Um, 
And I feel sorry for Superboy, actually, because you know what? Like, from the minute he's sort of introduced, you already know, like, this is going nowhere for him. He's just a punk kid with an he, attitude, right? He's a punk kid with an attitude. And, and, and I, feel, I feel badly for him. I think I, I identified with him. I was like, oh, he's got an uphill battle and he's going to lose. Um, in terms of going toe to toe, what I liked about uh, doing the, the voiceover of Cyborg Superman was that there was a lot of, as they say in the business, efforting when you got into the fights and stuff mm. like that. And uh, spoiler alert, there are some fights in the reign of the Superman. And, um, and it was really fun. I got really into it. I got into it too much, too fast, as a matter of fact. Uh, um, Wes Gleason, who was our, our casting director and the, and, the, and the voice guider, he was like, okay, back off, cowboy. And I'm like, what? I'm, 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 I'm fighting. He goes, yeah, you're going to fight like for eight hours, so <laughs> save it. Right. So I had to learn a little bit about that because this was really my first foray in doing a, doing a long action animation. Uh, were you familiar with the character of Cyborg Superman at all before taking this role? No. Um, I, a confession, I grew up on Mad Magazine, and that was my comic. That was it. I didn't have comic books growing up. Uh, somebody at the table said, they goes, oh, you were an outside kid. <laughs> so I was an outside kid, and I didn't do comics very much. So I came into it blind, which was actually great because I didn't have any preconceptions. Um, and uh, we were talking before when we were doing it, you know, uh, it's just as real as any other scene, play or uh, live action TV show that you're doing, um, it's just animated, that's it. And the key to it is to make sure that you keep it real, right? Wes was great about going ahead and making sure that I didn't uh, play a caricature of it. I mean, because even though it's animated, doesn't mean, I mean, what makes animation work best is when, when you believe it, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if everyone's believing it and really working towards that end, then that's when things sing. So, um, so it, was, it was really fun to find the modulation to make it right, you know what I mean? Do you enjoy playing the evil Superman? That's funny you keep calling him evil Superman. It's just He's a Superman with a different point of view, wouldn't you say, you know? You, you can twist it however you want. Uh, you can twist it any way you want. I don't know what, I don't know what show you're watching. <laughs> Thank you for spending some time with us. It's Thanks, a pleasure, sir. What's going on, BOFers? Peter Vera here at the Reign of the Superman panel uh, with the screenwriters, Jim Krieg. And Tim Sheridan. Hi. Gentlemen, tell me, uh, coming off the success of the first film, what was it like to bring the Reign of the Superman to life? It was a blast. Yeah, I mean, it's a dream come true. I mean, this is, this is a, a run of comics that were my first Superman comics that I read as a kid. And, um, and to get to work with uh, the best people in the business uh, to bring it to life it was incredible. What was it like writing Hen Hank Henshaw? He's literally the angriest man in DC Comics, so how do you bring that to life? I think I'm the angriest man in DC, uh, well, not in DC Comics, but in the, in the larger DC universe, and so I just, it was mostly me, how angry I was. Is Hank Henshaw in this movie? I wouldn't, I don't know how, what I'm allowed to say. Oh, that's right, <laughs> I, you're not. Uh, well, Cyborg, Cyborg Superman Cyborg, is. <laughs> Cyborg Superman's in the movie, and he does have some anger issues, but we all do. We all have a little uh, Cyborg Superman locked inside, and uh, occasionally he gets let loose <laughs> uh, I, uh, in, this, in this movie, in fact. Of the four Supermen, who's your favorite? Oh, that's just an impossible question. I think we really did some great stuff, like with Superboy. Like when I say we, I mean like the filmmakers, like not us. But they, um, the uh, he's, he's Superboy is fantastic in this. I think well, here's one of the great things we were able to do, because there is a whole history of these characters that developed around and after Reign of the Superman, we kind of knew some of the things. We knew what was coming for these characters. So we were able to sort of thread some of that into this story, back into this story as well. That's true, they're kind of blank slates a little bit in in the original event, but then we get to know them better. Yep. But I would say my favorite Superman in this is Lois Lane. I mean, <laughs> she is fantastic in this movie. And uh, Rebecca Romaine is terrific. The actor, yeah, the actor is great, and the and her character is really pops. I mean, she's kind of the star of the movie because, you know, you've got you've got a bunch of Superman to deal with, and then and then one cool center. They they all represent different aspects of Superman, and I think that like for me, I think I love Steel. Steel for me is the the heart of of Superman, and and um, and it's you know he's he's still beating in this uh, you know that that heart is still beating in this world without Superman. Yeah, because of Steel. Thank you for your time, gentlemen. Hey, thank you. What's going on, BOFers? Peter Vera here at the Reign of the Superman panel here with the voice of Cat Grant. Yes, hi, I'm Tokes Olagunde. Uh, Tokes, what, I called you Cat. Tokes, what, what was it like to play the other Lois Lane? Um, oh, there's only one Lois Lane. Um, 
I mean, Kat's a lot of fun. She's, you know, she's... She reminds me of like those old fashioned, like, you know, in the like the noir films that, you know, the, 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 the ladies that are like really tough and like, like she reminds me of one of those broads and I, I like that energy about her. So it's always fun to go into a, a voice booth and just like have sass and sarcasm and attitude and she's just a lot of fun to play. Did you base Kat on any particular? A specific reporter, journalist, anybody, or did you just kind of no. wing it? No, I, if anything, I subconsciously channeled my mother, but that's about it. Did, did you voice Kat in uh, The Death of Superman as well? I did. So uh, I, I really liked the relationship of Kat and Lois in that. It was kind of, she's the print, you're TV. What was, what was it like, the relationship going forward in the in the sequel to that? Um, I mean, she's still a support for her, but you see um, Kat more in, in the professional capacity. Um, so she's used, I think, very well as a device to move the story along. Um, and I don't ever think that, that that's a mistake to do with a character unless it's done poorly. And in this case, it's done very, very well. What's going on, BOFers? Peter Vera at New York Comic Con 2018, here with the director of The Reign of the Superman, um, <laughs> Sam Liu. I'm sorry, Sam. <laughs> That's How okay. are you? I'm uh, good. What was it like to bring The Reign of the Superman to the so small screen? Um, you know, this whole Death of Superman s saga, right? Um, uh, it's, it, it's, it's difficult because, again, it's one of those um, stories that... Um, I think a lot of people, they hold very close to their heart, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of sort of like, you know, as fandom goes, right, everybody has the thing that they love about it. Um, and a lot of times I feel like those things are sort of like snippets, you know what I mean? Okay. They're, they're special moments in the story that are very dear to them. And so it was daunting in general just because, again, like the whole event, uh, what is it about the event that, uh, uh, you know, resonates towards people, uh, to fans specifically? Um, the first one was a little bit easier, and, um, and I think, quite honestly, a lot of us were um, a little surprised of how well it was received, you know, because uh, in essence, it's very simple, but we, we wanted to make sure that, you know, we, we gave him a, a, a believable or like a fulfilling sort of death, you know. So the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the mission was a little bit simpler, you know. This one is difficult because um, we don't have a lot of time. We have four new Supermen to um, introduce um, and then execute some sort of, you know, story. Um, and uh, so, again, to do all that sort of within 72 minutes was really, really challenging. You know, there's, a, there's, there's like in like the uh, original Death of Superman, um, you know, we, we weren't as faithful to the book, but we try to capture the essence of it. And, um, again, just from... You know the reaction of it. I, you know, I think people were kind of okay with it, for the most part, right? So again, we're trying to sort of do that again with the Reign of Superman. We can't obviously capture everything that was in a year's worth of story that was, you know, crossed over with four separate, you know, titles and, you know, multiple kind of, right. you know, characters and all that kind of stuff. We had a finite amount of time uh, with four important characters, and those are the most important kind of things. And then also sort of Superman, obviously. Um, and so again. Given that sort of, you know, limited time and budget and stuff like that, hopefully we, you know, have made a fulfilling story. In the last movie, uh, Steel was almost the fanboy within the movie. Mm -hmm. What was it like to bring Steel into, well, it was um, uh, John Henry Irons. Uh, what was it like to actually get to the transition of John Henry Irons to Steel? Oh, um, you know, I think it, it feels like sort of a natural sort of progression. You know, he is almost... Um, He's like the next evolution of sort of the fanboy when it's like, you know, your your hero is gone, you know, and, you know, I don't want to spoil it too much, but again, I think he, be, you know, everybody knows that he's, well, that are, are fans anyways, they would know, but he, he sort of takes on the mantle just because he feels like a void has been been left, you know, and he needs to, you know, uphold that, the, the whole, basically. Coming off the success of the last film, how mm -hmm. confident are you in this one? You know, um... This is obvious, obviously just a gamble, right? Because again, like the first one, I don't think any of us expected it to sort of do as well as, as it did do. Um, this one, you know, um, there's a lot of hope. We, we did a lot of sort of like, you know, moving stuff around and making sure that it feels right. 
um, and we think it sort of does, you know. And, and again, it's it, it's a little fast, and there's a little bit of what I don't know. I, I, I it, it's hard to say because again, it's it's very, it is different. But I kind of feel like like the first one was, which was unexpected. Uh, we, we applied the same type of thing to this one, so hopefully it it does well. So, thank you for your time, Sam. All right, thank you.